Hey guys, Scott and Nate from playercourt.com and today we're going to show you how to generate more power with your drives and more topspin by shaping the ball. So today we're going to help you make some better decisions, show you when to drive, show you when to generate more topspin by shaping the ball. And this video is for players with a player court rating of 70 and up. If you're not in our community or familiar with our rating system, a player court 70 is the equivalent of a USTA 4.0. So the stuff we're going to go over today, while I definitely agree with Nate and understand he is way better at this type of instruction, this is sort of what a lot of his coaching is based off of. It's sort of his foundation, his holy grail of coaching. So I'm actually gonna step off camera. Nate, you're welcome and let you, uh, <laughs> let you take the reins on this today, Shape First Drive. All right, fair enough. All right, guys, I'm really excited to share this with you. As Scott said, this is really the blueprint for a lot of my teaching. And in fact, I, I had a good conversation with Andres Pedrosa, who is now the head coach of UVA, multiple national winner. Um, and, and Andreas was kind enough and uh, did a clinic with some of our, our top juniors. And we really got in depth with this conversation about shape versus drive. And he shared that he actually works with this stuff quite a bit with his players. I mean, what do you teach guys that are blue chip top recruited players? Um, and, and it's getting guys to be more aggressive by cutting off the angles, getting guys to be more defensive and, and not going for too much uh, when it's inappropriate. So I cannot drive home enough just how important this concept is. So let's jump into it. What is a shape versus a drive? The first thing to note, this is more about what the ball is doing, not what you're doing, okay? A drive is going to be when you attack the ball while it's ascending, all right? So the ball is up at the apex and you're being aggressive going through the ball, all right? But a drive is not while you're hitting the ball while it's descending, the ball is not dropping. That's where the shapes come in. So either the ball is really short and it's falling, it's descending, and you're gonna be able to create big tops with this and this is a shape. Or I'm being more conservative and perhaps I'm moving off the baseline, I'm allowing the ball to get up and down and descend where I'm then shaping. So if you're asking yourself, what do more advanced players do? We're gonna see a lot more drives. Doesn't mean they don't shape, but if you watch like a Federer and a, and a Djokovic, right, the ball's gonna be going through the court and they're gonna be hitting at the apex predominantly. Big defensive uh, positions or, or trying to get the ball off the court will be their shapes. If we talk about Rafael Nadal, we're gonna talk a lot more about shapes, but that guy definitely knows how to drive the ball. So guys, the simple way that we're gonna remember this is that when you're driving, we're gonna shoot arrows. What do arrows do? They move in a straight line and they penetrate. They go through the court, right? Doesn't mean you can't angle at all, but you better be aiming nice and safe when you're driving. You can't be too close to the lines. All right, shapes, they move like rainbows, right? But they're still offensive because they do a great job of getting your opponent off the court. But yes, they're better served as a defensive mechanism. So what, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna demonstrate first what the shapes look like. And as you notice, there's an X on the ground, and I'm gonna be working on this plane. I'm gonna stay away from working parallel with the baseline. And on this ball, I'm gonna be working away from it, allowing it to descend so I can get some big old heavy top spin. All right, let's see what that looks like. All right. So as you can see, I'm working off the court and I'm allowing the ball to drop. And what that's enabling me to do is to really work under the ball and work really up the ball to create this big, heavy topspin. I can use it to get my, uh, my opponent off the court, push them back, much like Nadal does, or I can use it defensively to kind of reset things, get my opponent to back off a little bit. All right, so on a ball that, that looks a little bit similar, but won't have quite as much on it. Then I can make the decision to drive, and now I'm attacking. Here I'm gonna be really focused on getting up to the ball and hitting it while it's at its apex. Let's take a look at what that looks like. So guys, as you can see, I'm moving to the ball with a lot more aggressive footwork. I'm hitting off my front foot, but most importantly, I'm hitting 
the ball at the apex, at the very top of the bounce, and I'm going through the court. I'm not giving my opponent any time to reset. I'm not waiting for the ball. I'm being super aggressive. Something really important to note here, though. If your swing path does not start high, you're not going to be able to effectively drive. The problem is if your racket is going low and you swing up, you're already lifting a ball that's lifted. So you guessed it, yeah, it's gonna go out, right? So from here, I'm working with the racket up and going all the way through the ball in order to drive it. On a shape, I'm simply gonna move back, I'm gonna let it drop, and I'm gonna shape it up. Now, some of these, can, can you turn a shape in a drive? Absolutely, right? If I can get low and get the, I can go all the way through that court and still drive the ball. This has nothing to do with height. It has nothing to do with how you're hitting the ball. This is a simple concept that is gonna dictate how you move and your decision making. So when you guys are told, you know, are you watching the ball, you hear your coaches, are you, are you watch, make sure you watch the ball. This is really what they should be talking about. They should be talking about the decision making you've made. Are you going to shape the ball? Are you gonna drive the ball? That's gonna tell you how to move to the ball. And it's also gonna tell you how you're gonna strike the ball, how you're gonna impart spin or work through the nose in order to drive. All right, so the same exact thing would be on the backhand. What we're gonna do now is show you a little drill that I like to practice, and, and our friend Scott gets to mess with me here. He's gonna work through this X, and he's gonna call out what he wants me to do. So I've gotta work on it on the fly so I can practice both. All right, so let's take a look at what that looks like now. All right, Scott, you weren't particularly kind there, were you? Out of breath, huh? Out of breath. It's a tough drill. We call it the X drill, but it's a phenomenal drill getting you to work through these patterns. For sure. And so to be clear, if I'm sort of a counter puncher and I'm looking to attack more, I guess I should be looking to move up and take that ball at the apex more often, right? Is that sort of the, the goal? 100%, guys. Think about how this works with your strategy, right? Like if you're looking to be more aggressive, you need to be looking for the apex of the ball and swinging through it to get a lot more aggressive. You're gonna be taking the time away from your opponent. A lot like Agassi. Think about how early that guy took the ball. Absolutely. All right, very cool. Great instruction. And I know this is sort of your holy grail, but bring us home here. Give us a quick summary for those watching at home. What's, what's sort of the quick, the quick actionable items here. What I want you to remember, this is not about how you're hitting the ball, it's about when you're hitting the ball. All right? If the ball is ascending and you're moving to it, striking it, that's a, that's a drive, that's your arrow, you're going through the court. All right? If the ball is descending, whether it be a short ball that you're moving up to or a ball that you're moving away from, that's a shape, that's a rainbow, right? Nice art getting over the net that you can work to get your opponent off the court. Make the appropriate decisions and you're gonna cut down your errors. And just like Scott said, if you're a counter puncher or somebody that doesn't have a lot of weapons, look for the apex, drive the ball to become more aggressive. And on the flip side, if you're somebody that's making a lot of errors, maybe we should back off a little bit. Allow the ball to drop, allow it to descend, and look at shapes that have a lot more margin for error. So Nate, that was great instruction. And as always, guys, Nate and I just want to help you improve your tennis game. The bottom line, as we always say, we just don't know a ton about you. Do us a favor, click the button or the link below, answer some questions for us about your specific skill level so we can send you some custom video coaching based on the stuff that's going on in your game. Click the button or the link below and Nate and I will do the rest.